Hello everybody and welcome to the first ever Game Dev Weekly News. A quick recap of what happened in the world of game development this week for the week of November the 22nd. Now I should start right up front and say that saying the week of is a bit of a misnomer. We're actually going to cover about 10 days in this recap. And going forward I can't promise that these are going to be weekly. They're more going to be dictated by when there's been enough stuff that happened. So I'm not going to bother reporting on news that didn't occur. Also of course your comments are really important to me. If this is interesting to you let me know and I'll continue to create them if this is boring as hell let me know and I'll stop creating them uh, so this is entirely up to you guys if I keep creating these news posts or not but again we're gonna cover pretty much what just happened in the past week ish uh, and this week was actually pretty busy we had uh, four major game engines release updates and they were and I'm going mostly in reverse chronological order here but uh, Cocos 2DX released version 3.19 uh, the reality is there's not a whole lot to this release. It's mostly a performance and stability release. Uh, there were a few new functions added, but uh, nothing overwhelming. Now, for every single news post I'm about to list here, I will link to the Game From Scratch news entity down below. So if you want more information, there's a link down in the comments. Uh, head on over if you want more information. So Cocos 3D, uh, sorry, Cocos 2D uh, X released version 3.9, not a lot in it. Uh, on the other hand, Unreal Engine released 4.10. Uh, and there was a little bit more in this guy. Um, it added new mobile effects, VR rendering optimizations, Visual Studio 2015 support, which was something a lot of people were waiting for, um, mobile material quality settings, uh, new landscape mirroring tools, additional controller support, updated SDKs, etc. Uh, also, uh, Urho, or Uro, I'm not sure my finish isn't great, uh, but Uro 3D uh, released version 1.5. Again, a big... Um, underlying technology update here. The major new features were probably uh, the addition of an underlying database system and an underlying local, um, localization subsystem. So those were added there. And then finally, uh, Game Guru 1.1 was released. Uh, Game Guru added, uh, it was mostly performance related update. I forgot to actually link to the actual update. Let me just find that quickly. Uh, but they added, um, Mostly performance and editor optimization tips in this release. Uh, so not a whole lot there, but definitely some improvements. Uh, then on top of that, the HTML5 game engine tooling Goo Engine, uh, Goo Create, uh, released Goo Engine source code under the MIT license. Now, Goo Engine is an HTML5 uh, WebGL uh, 3D engine for the web. And on top of that, there's Goo Create, which is their level editor and design tool. Um, so they released the underlying technology, the game engine itself, but not the tooling. Uh, so that's definitely nice. It's MIT license, it's available on GitHub. Now on top of that, there were a couple of major developer conferences this week. Um, Microsoft had their Connect, their annual Connect conference. And at the same time, Google had the Google Chrome Dev Summit going on. And we had a couple of announcements out from each of those summits or um, conferences. First off, Microsoft released Visual Studio Dev Essentials. Now, if you recall earlier this year, they released Visual Studio Code, which is a lightweight cross-platform Atom-based um, code editor. And they also released Visual Studio Community, which is basically a completely free version of the full Visual Studio suite to companies of less than five developers that make under a million dollars, I think it was. Well, this is an extension of that. So what they've done basically is they bundled together Visual Studio Community, Visual Studio Code, and the incredibly pointless at this point, Visual Studio Express, which was their previous free version of Visual Studio. Well, they've bundled that all under the same program uh, and they've added in Team Foundation Server Express, which is sort of um, a collaboration source archiving tool for larger teams. Now, on top of that, they've started bundling in a couple of different things. For Mac developers, they threw in a three month trial of Parallels, uh, which allows you to run Windows on a Mac. Uh, they also threw in Platform VM, which I have no idea what that actually is. Um, they added a bunch of training opportunities. So Pluralsight, a six month free subscription, Xamarin University, mobile training, uh, Wintelec three months subscription, and the $25 credit for hack hands, a couple other things, priority forum support. Now a lot of those are tagged as coming soon. So in other words, they don't exist yet. Now what is probably the most relevant of this entire announcement, however, is this guy over here. 
Um, basically, they made a bunch of free tiers available for different things, but the big one they added here is an, uh, the Windows Azure credit for one year at $25 a month. Now, $25 a month of Azure credits gets you about two full-time servers. So if you're looking at doing some server development, that's actually a pretty big score. Um, and Windows Azure is actually a very nice technology. I did a, I did a getting started tutorial on Game From Scratch. Just go ahead and search for it if you've never used it before. Uh, but Windows Azure is in the same category as uh, Amazon's EC2 cloud service or SoftLayer, which is what I actually host all of my stuff on. Uh, it's cloud-based computing, virtual computing, and it's really well done, especially if you're working in the Visual Studios ecosystem. So 25 bucks, um, a month for a year does actually work out to about two servers running all the time. So that's a nice opportunity there for developers. Now, another thing that came out of that release was um, Xamarin, a close partner to Microsoft. They're the ones that make the um, the iOS and Android version of the .NET runtime, plus Xamarin Studio, which started life as Mono Develop. So basically, they have created Visual Studio for other platforms. And Microsoft has kind of unofficially made them their uh, mechanism for supporting these platforms. And the two are getting closer and closer together in their time. So you can actually use Xamarin directly in Visual Studio, for example. And Xamarin itself is moving towards using Microsoft's recently released .NET source code. So those two are quite very much in bed together, which is why we saw this Xamarin announcement at the Microsoft Connect. Uh, so basically, Xamarin just released Xamarin 4. Uh, for developers or game developers specifically, there wasn't a ton in that release that would be of huge interest. There's some new testing and monitoring uh, functionality built in. Uh, Xamarin Forms 2.0 was released and uh, improved Visual Studio functionality. Um, so it's more of an incremental release more than anything else. Now at the same time, Google had their developer conference going on as well. Uh, that was the Google Chrome Dev Summit. Not a whole lot there of interest to game developers, but what you will probably find the most interesting of them all is they released a game called Zushi, or Zushi, or yeah, Zushi. That's, I think, the only way you could possibly say that. Um, it's available on the Google Play Store. It's completely open source. You can go over to GitHub, download the source code. Uh, but the big thing about Zushi is it's actually a test bed for, or um, a demonstration for a number of underlying game-related Google technologies. This is from the, the Fun Propulsion Labs, which is a game dev uh, think tank within Google itself. And those new libraries they announced were Motive, which is an animation system, uh, Corgi, which is a component-based entity component system, or ECS, uh, Flat UI, which is an immediate mode GUI system, a lightweight UI, uh, Scene Lab, which allows you to edit scenes from within the game, Breadboard, which allows you node-based scripting. Uh, basically, it's so you can have a designer coding uh, functionality in your C++ game without programming experience. And then FPL Base, which abstracts away the low-level stuff across different games. Now, this particular game was released for Android, Android TV, Windows, OS X, and Linux. Uh, it's C++ based. So all those libraries are C++ based as well. I've looked at a couple of them. Um, the quality definitely varies. I don't know that I would actually use any of them personally, but they're definitely worth checking out. Again, I'll have a link down below to this news item. So if you want to get to each of those individual, uh, this page is available. So you can actually go in a little bit more depth. They also built on a couple of technologies they used earlier, including flat buffers, MathFoo, which is a math library, FPL Utility, and WebP. WebP? I forget what WebP actually is. Oh, it's a new import. It's basically the replacement for... Uh, uh, ping and animated GIF, etc. And then uh, Leadworks Game Engine announced uh, they have Steam OS support now, so there's Steam launchers available. It's in uh, a trial or a beta form, but now you can basically run your Leadworks games on Steam. Uh, I guess that's an important release this week too. The Steam box was finally launched. Uh, truth of the matter is, the reception was rather lackluster. There was a lot of news reports basically saying that the Steam boxes. Um, they don't really have a lot of point for existing anymore because the performance parity, especially with the release of like Windows 8.1 getting better and then Windows 10 getting a lot better, is gaming was being benchmarked as being on the same hardware. The Windows um, 10 machines are outperforming the Steam OS machines. Now a lot of that comes down to device driver support, etc. And with time it may improve, but basically. Steam box kind of launched with a bit of a whimper. There weren't huge sales. There's not a lot of, of the 14 or so that were supposed to launch. I believe two or three actually made it to launch. So, so the Steam news itself has been sort of 
disappointing to say the least and even the controller itself is getting somewhat lackluster reviews from what i've read so far so um you know it's a slow burn it could turn around it could be a huge thing but steam os basically launched this week and it was a bit of a dud um now next up is robo vm the underlying technology for running uh Android app, oh sorry, um, Java applications on iOS. They just announced release 1.11. Uh, it added experimental bit code support. It added iOS 9.1 support and support for the Kotlin or Kotlin, Kotlin, I imagine, the Kotlin programming language, which is a new JVM based language from uh, the makers of IntelliJ, uh, NetBrains. A very nice looking uh, programming language for sure. Well, now RoboVM has support for it in its runtime. And on top of that, sort of somewhat related news, uh, LibGDX, the uh, popular cross-platform Java-based uh, 2D and 3D library, I've covered it extensively on Game From Scratch. So if you want uh, tutorials, there's a ton here in my uh, YouTube channel, also on Game From Scratch. But the LibGDX library just announced the first ever um, Game Jam. It's going to be, right now, they just started as of today, uh, taking votes for the topic. Uh, they're going to try and get it down to five from about 100 right now. Uh, so if you're interested in voting, I'll have the link down below again. Um, they've also announced some prizes available, including, uh, uh, where were they? We've got a uh, Mac Mini sponsored by RoboVM, thus the tie-in. Uh, there's an iPad out there, an iPod Touch. So some very, very, very nice stuff out there. Plus some uh, Steam keys for Halfway by Robotality and a bunch of t-shirts from uh, Mario, the leader of the LibGDX project. So uh, the exciting lineup of uh, prizes they got there for the LibGDX game. So if you're wanting more interest, again, link down below. Uh, now, two final pieces of news, both in the JavaScript realm. Uh, first one was the launch of AllegroJS.net, whose webpage may officially be down. We'll wait and see. Um, it will. Yeah, here we go. Uh, webpage is just slow to respond. It's a new JavaScript cross. Well, not cross platform, but new JavaScript game library based on Allegro. Now, Allegro was this nice C plus plus based free game engine from basically the land before time. Um, this I used in the early '90s. Um, for getting into 2D game development. It's been around for, well, since the early 90s. It actually started life as an Atari library that got ported over to the PC. And at the time, it was pretty much all there was. I think this is before SDL was even available. So you had Allegro, you had a couple commercial libraries like FastGraph, etc. And that's about it. So there wasn't a whole lot of game frameworks available at the time. And Allegro just shone like a jewel back then. Well, Allegro JS is a JavaScript based port. So it's just basically trying to be Allegro-like in its code format. Now, I love Allegro, and I don't know how much of this is just nostalgia from, you know, back in the 90s, but this is a, really just a kind of a cool project I was interested in. I don't know if there's a whole lot of reason to use it other than Allegro love, but Allegro is a nice, straightforward, sweet little um, SDK. So Allegro JS seems to have followed the same boat. Now, the nice thing is with this launch, with Allegro JS, they did a very good job on a day one launch. There's good reference material, there's good tutorials, there's good support, there's forums in place, there's everything ready to go. All it needs now is some people. So if a new kind of cool, lightweight JavaScript game library sounds cool to you, be sure to check out Allegro JS. Now the final piece of news and JavaScript news is NCSoft, the makers of um, Guild Wars, um, Lineage 2, and a bunch of other, mostly uh, online games. Well, they just released a plugin for Unreal Engine that gives you the ability to code in JavaScript. Now there's a lot of these projects on the go, but this is a very mature, ready to use commercial project. Uh, it's powered by the underlying V8 engine. It's uh, got a very JavaScript environment way of doing things. So there's, um, you can do your UI using Jade templating. There is um, ability to communicate over REST or pipes, etc. So you can kind of integrate with the rest of the world. There's auto completion available. Um, it's just a really well done um, project that basically adds another first class language to the Unreal Engine. Because right now with Unreal, you've basically got one of two choices. You can program in Blueprint, which is a high level visual system, or C++, which is a lower level not so visual system. And so having another option, a third option, such as JavaScript available is great. So it gives you kind of like that middle of the road area. So maybe it doesn't have, now one of the major things with Blueprint, as I've heard, 
is that it runs at about a tenth the speed of comparable C++ code. So that's a big price to pay. So hopefully that's not the problem when you're dealing with a mid-level language such as JavaScript. Now, coincidentally, there are another, there are a number of other language projects out there for Unreal Engine. I know somebody's working on a C Sharp uh, plugin. I know someone else was working on a JavaScript plugin. This one's special on the level of completeness it's got. Now, on the other hand, you're also on your own quite a bit. So if you can't work from code, you don't know JavaScript well, or you don't know Unreal well, this is not a turnkey project. There's still a lot of uh, stuff that you're going to have to figure out yourself for sure. Like you're going to have to um, figure out the exact syntax code it highlights. And the nice thing is there are uh, code completion bindings available to make it a little bit easier. And it does just follow the straight Unreal Engine 4 way of doing things. So you should be able to intuit most of what you need to know. And you can do things like um, extend classes, and, et cetera. So it's very well integrated, but there's no documentation. So you are 100% on your own. Uh, so basically that is it as far as I saw this last week in a little bit. Uh, that's what happened in the world of game dev. Now once again, I want to know if you're interested in me continuing this series, this recaps of what's going on, sort of kind of bit summary, quick summary of what happened and keep you up to date that way. Uh, hopefully you found that interesting. If you want me to keep going, please let me know in the comments below. If you want me to stop, please let me know that as well. See you all later. Have a good weekend. Bye.